back in the studio, and we are now uh, talking to a uh, lovely lady that I just talked to uh, earlier in the day, C.J. Ellison. C.J., are you there? Yes, I am, Nick. How are you? I'm doing fine. Sorry that I threw the monkey wrench into our timing. No problem. You're a sweetheart for understanding. Uh, I did forget that we already had a, an interview set up with Claude and this Occupy Toronto thing. Do you have anything like that where you come from? the occupied kind of phenomenon. I was listening to it uh, downstairs by my terminal, and I was really impressed and surprised. I, I I, think I'm just really politically ignorant. Here I am right outside of D.C., and it's, I'm inundated with it constantly. So when I've lived in other areas of the country, I wasn't aware of how much I was lacking in my political understanding until I moved to this area again, and I was, of course, reinforced with, wow, you really don't know what's going on in the country. Here you are right next to the hot seat of the, of the nation, and it's kind of thrown at you every day. So you do start to tune it out a lot, but listening to what the Toronto students are going through and what their advice was, and I thought that every answer was really unique and, and very well said. It was, it was a joy to listen to it. I don't know if we have anything similar in the area where I am. Where if are there's you? been any type of... I'm, I'm in uh, Sterling, which is... Uh, Probably about 18 miles west of D.C. Okay. You've got uh, uh, excellent books, uh, Vampire Vacation Book 1 and 2, which I have, and thank you for the copies, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for the lovely card, too. It was very, very, very uh, beautiful. Did you actually read the books? Uh, no. <laughs> I, no. What I, what I read was um, uh, bits and pieces of both books. Uh, because I am already in the midst of reading like 10 other books. And to be honest with you, it's almost impossible for me to be caught up with all the people and authors that I'm interviewing. So I'm very We call honest. that our to-be-read pile, so it sounds like your to-be-read pile. Yeah, yeah, right it's, it's yeah. to-be-read pile, and uh, I did get a chance to read. You know what I found about your, your writing uh, is the – I don't know if you feel you've been influenced by this person. Uh, but I, I really feel that you have been influenced by this person. And maybe you, you feel this way or not. But Anne Rice comes to mind as I was reading a lot of your work. And oh, that's a huge compliment. Thank you very much. She was uh, here in Toronto on George Strombo's uh, show, actually. And, uh, yeah, I really felt that. Uh, I'm a big fan of hers, too. Yeah, she's an amazing woman. I followed her on Facebook, and it was a, when she was doing a lot of the posts herself, but when she first started out, it was really amazing to see the conversations that she got started. She's very active, obviously, in the uh, in the Catholic faith and her belief systems and about what she feels is wrong with religion, and, and that's uh, something that I probably would never feel comfortable touching in a public forum, and she really handles it beautifully. She feels very strong about certain things, and she stands up for it. I think it's terrific. She, she does, and yeah, again, your writing definitely echoes uh, to some extent, although you've obviously got your own style. You're, you've done very, 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 very well. You've got your <laughs> own publishing company, but it's not a vanity press. You have other authors that you have uh, that on your publishing company, and they're all doing well, and you've done very well. What's your Thank secret, you. lady? I'd say the, the secret is to reach readers. There are, you know, when you first get involved with writing, and I know you've got your relaunch of your book out, so you know what I'm talking about. Yes. You wind up uh, meeting a lot of other writers, a lot of people who are interested in the industry, uh, bloggers, maybe people who are doing memoirs, or someone wants to write a, a nonfiction book. However you come together, you come together for your love of the written word. And what you find is they, these people are all really interested in talking about their projects, and they're all really interested in, in reading projects similar to their own, but they might not necessarily be your target audience. So here you are, you've got a great connection and a new friend, but are they really a reader? Are they the person who reads your genre or your style? And that's the hardest thing as a writer is to really connect with the people who are the ones who, who love what you've written. And you, they won't know it until you get it to them, until they actually find you. I know that my style isn't for everyone, but people who love vampires and love sex, uh, they really enjoy my books. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a very small niche, and when they find it, they... they they clamor for more. Is it a small niche in this well, day and age of New Moon and Twilight and my babysitter's uh, I can say that I, I, I do have some readers who have read Twilight and like my stuff, but I mm -hmm. think that the people who really enjoy Twilight, 
they're a different class of reader. They're, that's a very much of a romance tale. It's yeah. it's very much relationship driven, and my books are not relationship driven. Uh, they aren't classified as a romance because the couple's already married. The only reason why somebody would like to slot them as a romance book is because of the sex, and it's pretty graphic. So it is they pretty think, well, graphic. <laughs> so you read those parts, huh? Well, I did. Yeah, I'm sorry I gravitated to those. I I'm a lonely bachelor right now. No, I have some friends. I get my thrills from wherever I can grab them. You know, it's kind of funny that Good way. for you. Oh yeah, well, I, thank my you. My friends again. who saw some picked it up. They would flip to certain sections. They'd say, "So where did you say the first sex scene was? And where is it?" And then they would start to get involved with the book because they felt like, "Well, she can write this part pretty good. Maybe I'll read the rest." <laughs> this is Nick Beat on CIUT. We're talking to uh, C.J. Ellison. Has written Vampire Vacation series book one and two. And, and three. Uh, and three. Now, yeah. is three already out? Yes, three released last Monday. So book two is called Big Game. Book three, I'm sorry, book two is called The Hunt. Book three is Big Game, and that's the one that released on uh, the 23rd. And the, the uh, e-book edition came out first, and the print book edition comes out next week. Okay, this is Nick B. on CIUT's Hal. Uh, a little later in the show, we're going to be talking to author, writer, poet, Mina Wallen. And uh, Brandon Pitts, he's got a big announcement to make. Uh, very, very soon. But right now, we're talking to C.J. Ellison. Hope you're enjoying the show. She's written some excellent books of Vamp Vampire Vacation series, books one, two, three. How do you get your books? Do you mean my ideas? or No, no. How do, how do people buy them? Oh, where can I get them? my books? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, well, in Canada, you can find them at Kobo uh, and Amazon as well. Barnes & Noble. Uh, there's also some international places to get them, like uh, Powell's Book Depository. Uh, lots of places. It's on about 63 or 65 different retailers uh, worldwide. But the big ones are always the easiest. You know, you can get them in Apple, and if you happen to have a, any, any Apple product, they're in the iStore. So they're everywhere. Okay, you've sold a phenomenal amount of books. Now, were all those books hardcovers, or were, were some of them e-books, e-book format? No, the largest percentage, I'd say probably 98% of them have all been e-books. I hadn't realized the market was going to be as huge as it was, and it, it really has surprised me because people seem to think, oh, you know, it's, it's, everyone still enjoys print books. I think it depends on your age, depends on your demographic and what you're interested in. If you're a real avid reader, you probably switched to an e-reader a while ago. If you just happen to have a passing fancy with books, and you might have had a family member give you one. They just seem to be the, one of the hottest gifts the past two Christmases in a row. So it's, it's really opened up the doors to a lot of, uh, of struggling authors like myself who may not have a large publisher with a big budget behind them, but have a marketing plan and have enough savvy to be able to reach readers. Now, your authors, do they get a good uh, royalty? Uh, I assume that they do, actually. A good arrangement with you. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the company is not open to submissions. I want to make that clear yeah, because once yeah. I say what the royalties are, everyone's going to be clamoring. Um, Red Hot Publishing only takes 10%. The rest, oh. of it, uh, the rest of it goes to the authors. Oh, that's very, very, very fair. Very fair. <laughs> now, so for them to get 90%, yeah, I think that's where they're fair. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I think it's, it's definitely fair and a very, a very, uh, very generous uh, offer, too, I, I might add. This is Nick B. We're talking to C.J. Ellison. A little later, Brandon Pitt, we're going to be talking to Mina Wallen, also an author, poet. She has some wonderful things to tell us about. And we're going to be playing, near the end of the show, uh, Daniela Gaudina. Uh, she is a poet, author, writer, uh, into holistic medicine uh, uh, and natural pathology. And we're going to be playing tracks she recorded about six years ago, uh, just as a surprise. Uh, she's very, very good chanter and poet and uh, compelling person to see live. So check out her Facebook, Daniela Godinas, G-O-D-I-N-A. Okay, um, we're going to take a, a little uh, break for an ad. This is Nick Beat. We'll be back with more of Howl, and we'll be back with C.J. Ellison, and then uh, we'll be talking to Brandon Pitt and then Mina Wall. From the roots up. CIUT 89.5 FM, broadcasting live 24 hours a day, seven days a week from Hart House, University of Toronto. We're back. Jeez, that was the shortest ad I've ever experienced. Anyway, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're back and uh, just getting bust there by uh, Mina Wallen. Mina's going to be on in a few minutes. 
but we're talking to C.J. Ellison. C.J., uh, you've sold over 50,000 copies of, of these books. Uh, again, i got to ask, most of it was ebook sales. How did you do that? Uh, you know, <laughs> word of mouth, uh, word advertising, of mouth? Okay. Uh, reviewing, blogging, okay. it, it, it's been a, a really hard sell. I can't say that it happened overnight. First book released October 2010. Okay. And I, I probably sold about 2,500 copies before I switched the cover, uh, the cover that you currently have, the purple one. Yeah. Once I switched the cover, uh, sales took off. I then offered half my book for free. My thought was if people read it, half of it and they like it, they'll want to see how it ends. And it turned out to be a, a really good selling point. I think so many authors are afraid to put their work up anywhere. They don't. They're afraid of plagiarism. They're afraid of someone's going to steal their ideas. I had some uh, some friends tell me in the writing world who had a lot of experience that you know no matter what idea you have ever had, someone else in the world has thought of it at some time or other. No one's going to steal your idea because somebody's already thought of it. The big difference between your idea and their idea is execution. So if you can execute the idea better than somebody else, then you will sell it, and you will sell well. You can use Anne Rice or Stephanie Meyer as an example. Each of them are vampires. And the stories that they told have probably been told a million other times by other writers. They just weren't as successful because of the execution. It has to really strike a chord with someone when they're reading. And if you can master that, then you've got a reader. And giving my work away was the way that I was able to reach people. So even right now, I have my first book offered as like a lost leader rate. It's at 99 cents. Because if they like it, they'll read the rest of the, they'll read the other rest books in the series. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I never thought of that. I have mm -hmm. one ebook. Tyranny of Love is also an ebook too. And uh, that's very interesting what you're saying. I'm going to keep that in mind as a marketing strategy. This is Nick Beat on CIT's Howl from Toronto, Canada, out to the rest of the planet. And we're just uh, rounding up an interview with C.J. Ellison, who has a, uh, three novels, the Vampire Vacation series books, one, two, and three. Uh, excellent writer. Uh, as I said, uh, Anne Rice comes to mind. Uh, not... Uh, the mayor chick that wrote Twilight, which is some of the most <laughs> dreadful writing I've ever read in my life. But teenagers well, would like it up, book. yeah, and uh, they do. So that she's she's done great. But uh, there, and there you go, and CJ. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Can we let people know one more time how to order your book, ebook or hardcover? I would say Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the Apple iStore, but also if they'd like to read half my book for free and don't necessarily have an e-reader, they can come to my website, which is www.cjellison.com. -E -L -L two L's and two S's. So, or they can search me on Facebook, and Facebook is a great way to see my work as well. I've got At one point I had half my book up there, now I've just got a couple chapters. Wow, that's a great, that's a great way of uh, promoting it. CJ, good luck again. You're doing so great. Congratulations. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Nick. It was an absolute pleasure. We'll have you back. We'll talk about number three. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks, CJ.